What's up, BB fam? We gonna grind it out here again on these YouTube streets. A brand new year once again here on these YouTube streets. Not looking for fame, just doing our thing here on these YouTube streets. We going to mukbang it. Let's show some mad love here on these YouTube streets. With these delicious dishes, we're gonna blow your mind here on these YouTube streets. Setting our grind one bite at a time here on these YouTube streets. Popping beers and bottles. Painting our faces Everybody up like fat bitch models. Welcome to the freak show, the best in town. We here, oh, baby. I'm here on with anybody, honestly. I've been living in my own head, constantly yes, double sure. ground. Think I need a little bottom in white. Hey, y'all. So today we got a beautiful, beautiful recipe for you. So I wanted to do a recipe video and a mukbang for the new year. So we are starting off with a recipe video for the new year. It's an updated video. This is my New Year's Eve. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We're going to bring the New Year in with this mukbang. But first, we got to do the recipe. And we're making manudo. Yes, we're making manudo my way. And I'm showing you a step-by-step -step process, honey. Yeah, so stay tuned. All righty, y'all. This is Vern. So, yes, this is our step one process that we're doing. So, we are making manudo. Uh... Went over that in the intro. So this is step one. And basically we got our tripe on this side. We got our pig feet on this side. So we're going to start with our pig feet. And we're going to do our tripe. We're going to clean it up real good. Because they say they're clean. But they're not that clean. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how I do it. Over here. So the pig feet. These are nice little pig feet. So basically... I've already cleaned and sanitized. This is just a uh, watered down bleach cleaner. Uh, actually, I use the cleaner up. It's just water and bleach. That's what I use for my sanitizer. So this has all been cleaned and sanitized. So pretty much I just start by turning the water on. Uh, and these are still partially frozen. Uh, these actually thawed out pretty good so we get all the trash out of there toss it and this is just the process I do on how I clean my feet and my stuff because uh, I mean we are eating the feet so they need to be cleaned real good look for hair splotches like right here Matter of fact, number one, you see all that? That's nothing but hair. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, kind of what I do for that is I get me a really, really sharp knife where you can get you a razor. And on this side that we're not using yet, we are going to scrape the hair off and wash it. And this knife is really sharp. It's good that you do have a really sharp knife or use a razor, disposable razor blade. Yeah, these feet are very, uh, what do you say, hairy, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, look on that side, all that hair. So, which sucks. Normally, they're pretty clean. If I would have got them at the Asian store, they would have been perfection. But let me see how these other ones are looking. See, now these ain't bad, see? These look nice and clean. And let me go over these. That's actually the first time I've seen. And I don't like the way they split them like this. I'd rather them be whole. Or they split them into big pieces like this, rather than be this size. Don't give me all these little crappy pieces, you know what I mean? Especially when I pay good money for them. I know, and all this stuff used to be cheap, and now it's expensive as hell. But 
But yeah, anyway, so you're just going to get it clean. Get all that hair off. I got some on some hot water loosening that skin up to get the hairy foot clean and be careful don't cut yourself because I get scared when I work with this knife because <laughs> You could take a fingertip off real quickly. Like. Ooh. Yep. Hello, VB friends. How y'all doing? I love y'all. And these are slippery, so that's another reason I say be careful. And like I said, they're normally not this bad. It's just this one that I got. I guess no luck at all. Man. And you don't even get much pig feet. If not, I would have threw this hairy thing away. But at the same time, it's the nature of the beast. It's a little easier with the razor than trying to use the knife, especially when the knife is can cut the tip of your finger without you even knowing it at all. But anyways, I figure I'll come with an updated recipe. But yeah, you just want these nice and clean. Matter of fact, all this little part here. <laughs> Scared. This little part here can go bye bye. Sharpen some knives. Mm 
Okay. So yeah, you want it to be nice and clean like that. You don't want all that hair on it. You want it to be nice and clean like that. So basically, move these out of the way. So basically, I just wash them really good. I'm gonna fill this sink up since they're still halfway frozen. We're gonna let them sit. And we're gonna fill this up. And then I take my salt. I like using pure sea salt. That's what I use. Yeah, because these are gonna sit and get all that funky chew monkey off of it. So we'll add some salt. That's gonna clean it. Now you can either use real lime juice. I got this true lime packages that I buy. They're crystallized lime juice. So I got some lime juice. I also have some some lemons up here as well. So we'll just use a mixture and we're just going to let this sit and get all nice and clean and happy. We will put vinegar when we cook these and we will be cooking the pig feet first. So we're just going to let this sit, get all cleaned up and we're going to go on to the next one. And that's that piece where I couldn't get all that hair off because it was just too hard to shave. So that one goes bye bye in the trashy. All right, and then the next one, I usually, when I do my tripe, I always try to get tripe that is whole, but this was cheap. This was uh, scalded. This is pre-scalded tripe. Uh, you could get the honeycomb tripe, which is better, but it's expensive. I like the whole stomachs. I don't like it all. You see how this is all chopped up? I normally don't buy it that way ever. I usually buy the whole stomach and I chop it up. I cook it and then I chop it up myself. But like I said, since this was cheap, it was like 12 something. And uh, I don't know why these uh, pig feed and all this awful meat that nobody used to eat. <laughs> and now the price is just out of control. Yeah, because like the honeycomb tripe, they wanted like $22 for the same size. I was like, oh, hell no. And like I said, some of the fat has already come off of this because it's been pre-cooked. But it's still tough as hell. And then I'm going to be showing you in my pressure cooker. That's the way I cook mine now. So... Uh... We're gonna get some of this, most of this fat poured out. This is very fatty tripe. Yeah, very fatty. That's basically what I'll do. I'll get wash it, get it clean, and you see all this is pure fat that's around it. Nothing but pure, pure fat. Like all this. It has a very like lard type, leafy type fat to this. So And I gotta let this water heat up again. Anyways. So we're gonna take our salt. 
And this ain't the last time we're cleaning it. This is just the first go around. So, take the salt. Because I'm going to wash this out in warm water once this water heats back up. We've got the lemon. We got the lime. And like I said, we're going to soak. Let this water heat back up. And rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse. And that's basically how I clean mine. Uh, soak it and rinse it. But like I said, I suggest you buy the trap hole. Don't get it all chopped up like this. Is my recommendation. So... A lot of this is just fat. You see how it's floating? Like all that is just pure fat. Not very good trap. Fatty old trap. Like all that fat. That ain't even meat. So yeah. The tribe's got a while to go. But we're gonna let it soak. Yeah, you see all that is pure fat. When it floats like that, it's just pure fat. And like I said, this has been scalded. So that's why all this fat's coming off like that. And the main reason I don't like buying it like this, because you get too much fat with it, not enough meat. And if the stomachs are whole, then after it shrinks and does all that, then that's when... I cut it up after it's cooked with a pair of scissors. It's just so much better quality. But, you know, sometimes, especially during the holidays when they don't have the regular seasonal products that you're used to, uh, you got to go with what they got. So, I mean, we couldn't even get, like, the rack of ribs that they carry all year round in two packs they didn't even have during the holiday season season so. anyways we'll let it soak and get all this fat out of here look at all that fat all that's fat so yeah wash your feet wash your trap real good and we'll be back with the cooking process of the pork feet our piggies in here as you can see we got a little bit of water. They are nice and clean. And usually what I'll do is I'll take, uh, I got some, uh, I just minimally season them because we're going to cook this first for 40 minutes. So I'll just take some, if I got a half a pack of taco seasoning, I'll throw that in there. And we'll throw a little, uh, a little Tony Satry's Creole seasoning. Because basically we're cooking these first. That way we can let them cool. And we can pull the bones and the meat off of them. And that's how you get your debone pig feet in your menudo. We still got tons of spices to add later on. This is just a basic season. Okay. And like I said, if you don't have much... Uh, you can just use your taco seasoning. Uh, but the actual seasoning we're going to be using for the menudo itself, when we get ready to, the tripe is cooked and we put it all together. Yes. This is the Fiesta Menudo Spice. So I got a big one. This does a lot. So we're going to go ahead and put this lid on. Make sure we got the top of it closed. 
because we're going to pressure cook this for 40 minutes. And then we're going to come down here. And we're going to hit pressure cook. It's set for 40 minutes. And it will take off in just a minute. All right, so we're on. We got our thing on top closed. We got our letters closed. And we set. So now this is going to cook and pressure up for 40 minutes. And we'll be back when this cools down. And uh, we go to the next step. All right, yeah. Alrighty, y'all. So now we're going to do the tripe. So I already got the pig feet out. Uh, I got it cooling off. I got uh, my stock from my pig feet. I got it in a jar cooling off. Uh, and this is the tripe right here. See how clean it came out? And that was several, several washes. So we're going to get this tripe in here. It was very fatty tripe. So we're going to get all this tripe in here. And then I'm going to add some water. i got to rewash this bowl for sure. Ugh. But yeah. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's add some water. So yeah, you can see it looks very, very clean. And what you gotta do, you just gotta keep washing it. Keep cleaning it. And as soon as them pig feet cool down, we'll debone the pig feet. This tripe will be finished and then we're gonna add everything together. But we're going to add a little bit of seasonings to this now. But I want a nice clean broth. That's what I'm looking for. I want a nice clean tasting broth. And I have a feeling as... What do you call it? fatty as this was that we're probably going to have to dump it cook it, dump it, and then start over with some new stock and then add the pig stock in and make it real good but yeah this is my simple process that I do and I did like I said so we're going to put our tripe in here. We're going to add a few seasonings. We're going to add some... Uh, we're going to add a little Greek seasoning. And don't worry, we're still going to add our Mexican seasoning. That's just a little bit later on. I just like to give it a little flavor while it's cooking. And then it's going to get the big shebang flavor. Everything at the end. And this is how I make like a nice super clean version of it. A good tasting clean version. Add just a little bit of cumin. A little bit of paprika. That's about it. We're going to stop right there. And... Gotta give it some flavor while it cooks. Alright. So if this comes out super, super greasy, which I have a feeling it will. Even as much as we cleaned it. So. We're gonna turn this on now. Cook it. And... I think we're going to go an hour for this one because tripe is a little tougher. So I'm going to do an hour. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to cook that. Although it is cut up. 
Nah, let's do 40 minutes. Let's keep it at 40 minutes. Pressure cook. Let's just keep it at 40 minutes because we're still going to continue to put everything together and cook it. Let's just do 40 minutes. Since this is chopped up anyways, I don't want to overdo it. Because I usually buy the whole stomach, so. Alright. Alrighty, y'all. So, we are back again. So, let's go ahead and open this up. I've been letting this cool down for a while. So, our tripe just got done cooking. I just shut it off. We're going to let the machine cool down and decompress on its own. These are our beautiful, beautiful pig feet. As you can see, which we're going to hold ahead and use the same baggie that we had them wrapped in. We're gonna put the baggie in the sink because all the bones are gonna get discarded in here. So basically, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna use this clean plate and all this is clean. I keep everything super clean. Yes. And sometimes there are little bones down here that you want to get out as well so anyways so we got our clean plate we got our our feet right here which i'm sure you can see and basically we're just going to start pulling our bones there's tons of little bones and feet so it's kind of why i cook them 40 minutes you see how done they are they're nice wiggly gelatinous at this point you can cook them for 40 minutes you can eat them uh you can actually continue to braise them and this has got meat so and i've done this for so many years you just want to get the bones out and get as much gelatinous meat and skin and all the goody bits out and get rid of the bones so a lot of times i go through it like this that way I can get bigger whole pieces. And I'll just fill for bones. There's another blow bone right here. And pull that out. You know, there's a little... Oh, that's meat. Okay, that's good. But yeah, I just go down them. Find the bones, pull them out just fill it so we got that halfway done there's no bones in that it's just all pig meat pig fat and that's all i do and that's what we're going to sit here and do and do all these get them all deboned nice and delicious That way we can get all our ingredients together, season it, and then make it all happy together. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, we got us a big bone. Boom. <laughs> big old toenail bones. Blurp. <laughs> and like I said, you can just sit here and feel what's meat bone or gelatinous bone. Bone, bone, <laughs> mm -hmm. bone, 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 ba bone, ba bone, what you gonna do to bone this pig feet, get it ready to eat for you, da bone, ba bone, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna da bone this pig feet and get it ready to eat for us. And then I just go across it and I fill it again. Because there's a lot of little hidden bones. So, like I said, it just takes practice makes perfect. More or less. And like I said, I've been doing this for... Ever since I was 16 years old, so... I kind of got a... <laughs> kind of know what I'm looking for.
<laughs> but yeah, it makes it a lot easier when you kind of high class the manudo up a little bit. Still use your pig feet. You can also use, um, I'm going to give you a couple tips. You can also, if you don't like tripe, you can go more like, you can do pasole. If you don't like tripe or not, or pig feet or stuff like that, then you just use like pork butt and hominy and stuff like that. And then that's what they call persole, basically. Uh, but I like all the fun jiggly bits. Some other stuff you can do, if you want to add more meat to it, add you some pork butt. Uh, you can add hocks. Like I said, definitely the feet, because I like the jiggly bits. And the other good thing that you can add to this that makes it good is beef tendon. If you ever have beef tendon, it's just like the jiggly, gelatinous part, tendon of the cow, which you can get at the Asian store. And that's very, very good in manuva. Because, I mean, you're already paying high price now for just some pig feet and... A few pig feet and you know that little thing of tripe was almost thirteen dollars that was all cut up and fatty as hell so and that's buying what's cheap that ain't even buying the the quality but if you go to the Asian store because I want to go definitely this month because I want to get the mahals or they call it buche which is the pork stomach I'm going to do some pork stomach. I want to get some beef tendon. Do some more manudo. Oop. Whoa, 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 whoa. And be careful. Don't throw your good bits in the wrong bits. Because I have a habit of that sometimes. It's like, no. <laughs> wrong way, Vern. You dyslexic ass mother trucker. <laughs> And I like to save as much as I can, but sometimes it just gets too. Too jiggly on you. But anyways, you get the gist of what we're uh, getting at and doing. Uh, you know. Get these pig feet nice and. And like these meats, they cook down. So like, it's not like you get a whole bunch of them, you know. So, and like I said, they're four times more expensive these days than they were back in the day, for whatever reason. I guess more people eating them, or gouging the poor man's. Uh. But yeah, next time we'll definitely do beef tendon. Ooh, yeah, look at that good old skin. Just trying to get as much as I can. See, look at all that meat. You'll get some meat. We get some meat with it. Give me that tendon with it. <laughs> yeah, that's about good enough. 
Like I said, you ain't gonna get a whole bunch. Alright. So yeah, this is basically what you're going to have left. It's all deboned. Well, still a little bone in that piece. But yeah, it's deboned as best as I can get it. That way you ain't chopping on a bone. It's all just skin, meat, and whatever else in between. So yeah, that's how you debone the pig feet. And ready. So we're going to put this on saute. So, we just, uh, we took our tripe out, and just like I said, it was too fatty, uh, but the tripe has, you know, gotten tender, so we're gonna get everything together now and put it all in one. So, this is the next step, baby. Yes, the next step. So... Now, what I like to do is I like to build flavors. So, I like to add a little extra ingredients, a little freshness. Uh, so, we got uh, pig feet, debone, ready to go. Uh, we got, okay, we got, so we're going to do some bacon. So, now we're going to build the soup. <laughs> now we building. So we're just going to cut this bacon into lardones. This is just for flavor and a little oil. But good flavor. Not bad flavor. Okay. And we're going to add some fresh veggies. This is just the way I do mine. You know, it's not traditional. I don't make mine the same way. Every, every time either. So, uh, this is just what I do, baby. This is what I do. So, we're going to go ahead and fry some of this bacon up. That's why we got it on saute right now. And basically, we're going to saute the bacon. Turn it this way we can see it. We're going to saute this bacon. And I got some fresh tomatoes, fresh jalapeno, and some fresh onions. And that's going to be fried up once this get uh, ready with. And then we're going to combine. So we got tripe. We got pig feet. I got pig ears. And we got hominy. And that's what we're putting in it. So yes. So we're just going to go ahead and saute this up. And it's going to be good. Oh yeah. And if you notice. Because I cleaned everything very well. To begin with. That we haven't used any vinegar yet. So I'm going to use the salt and vinegar. Plus. I'm going to use some homemade pickle vinegar that I got here too, where I pickled some peppers, and uh, we're going to use some of that vinegar. So yeah, we're going to get this sauteed up. And I'm not looking for it to be brown. This is just flavor. We're going to go ahead and add this in here. Now that we got a little oil going. And we're just going to saute all this down. Up in here. See? 
What I mean by building flavor, that's what we're doing. Yep. And this fresh veg is gonna cook down in the soup. You know, it's uh, it's gonna be delicious. So while we're doing that, let me uh drain this big can of hominy because hominy everything's going in at this point seasonings everything but hopefully you enjoyed this recipe I know I am we're gonna come back with the mukbang so this will be the recipe video and then we'll do a mukbang after this is all good and ready but I just wanted to give y'all an updated version because you know I don't sit there and boil pots all day I use my pressure cooker and my slow cooker function I use my instant pot let's put it that way <laughs> come on so we can never get the can open This is a big can. I like lots of hominy, so we are using a big can of hominy. We are actually using a six pound can of hominy, <laughs> but I like hominy. So. And we're using Juanita's hominy. It's the best hominy you can buy. It's not like the hominy you get in the vegetable section where it's all soggy. This hominy is not soggy. You get this one in the Spanish section. It's called Juanitas. And you get a big, big can like this for five bucks. <laughs> yep. So we're going to drain all this juice out. Yeah, please use Juanita's hominy. It is the best. Do not use that hominy that's in the vegetable section. This is fresh pop hominy. And I'll show you the difference. You see that? That's fresh hominy. And that's the Juanita's. That's the one we're going to be using. Gonna be good. Okay, and like I said, this is gonna cook down, so we're not sitting here trying to cook it forever. You know what I mean? Uh, now. So this is my tripe. So this is how the tripe came out. Nice and delicious. That's our tripe. And it cooks down quite a bit, so. Yep. Everything cooks down quite a bit. So this is our pig ear. Uh huh. Pig ear. I mean, not our pig ear, our pig feet. That's our pig feet. Yep. This is our pig ear. 
<laughs> this is our pig ear. So we got our uh, our tri our pig feet and pig ear in there. Which is gonna be delicious. And we still gotta add more stock. But I'm gonna mix this up. And you see all the meats and oh my god. They're gonna be goo. Oh my jiggly bits. Okay. Ugh. We're gonna put the hominy in. Let me wash this a little bit. Sometimes it gets kind of like sediment at the bottom. You just want to wash that out. Okay, so we got our hominy in here. Okay. Now this is the pork stock. When we cook the feet that we saved. Okay. Because this is soup after all. I don't like it too thin. I don't like it too thick. Let's go ahead and mix it up and see what it's looking like. Oh yeah. This is going to be good flavor. See now we're building the flavor so we can get to Manoodle Town. Mm-hmm. And I've been making this dish, like I said, since I was 16 years old, so uh, I never make it the same way once. <laughs> Always got to shake it up. Always got to shake it up. So we're going to add a little bit of this salt and vinegar so the salt will season it. The vinegar powder will put some of that vinegar in it. And then we're going to add... Just some regular vinegar off our chilies. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of bay leaf ground. And sometimes if I have like, this is that Tapatia Beardia. I had some of that left over. So, why waste it? Let's throw it in there. Got me some cumin. I love me some cumin. I'm going to put some little more smoked paprika. Because I love smoked paprika. Okay. We're going to add some oregano. I like to bump the oregano up on this one. And like I said, at the end, we're going to garnish it with our true lime, crystallized lime, and our cilantro and onions. So, now we got our menudo mix. So, let me go ahead and crack this bad boy open. And we're going to put quite a bit of this in here. Cause I like my manoodle nice and red. So we'll start off with like that. So yeah, Let's see how that's looking now. Oh yeah, and then we're gonna put this back on, but we're gonna put this on the slow cooker function on here and get it a a twerking and a bubbling on the slow cooker function and I'm gonna probably add a little bit more water mm. I 
already know it's gonna be good. Probably add me a little more salt and vinegar. But you can always add more seasonings, you just can't take them out, you know what I mean? So, like I said, I've been doing this for years, so I kind of... Know what I'm looking for. Add some more water. So when this gets nicely cooked down later, we'll be back. We'll adjust the seasoning and let you know when it's done. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video so far. This is my twist and take on my manoodles that I make over the years. Uh, like I said, I never make them the same way twice. And like I said, this has the tripe, which is the cow stomach. It's got the pig feet, deboned. And it's got pig gear. So yes. And we fortified it with a little bacon and some fresh veggies on top of it. Mm-hmm. Got our pork stock. And restarted our water. Because we didn't want all that fattiness in our menudo. From the other stock. So we're going to go ahead. Close her up. And put this bad boy on the slow cooker setting. So cancel. And you know what I may do? That's actually good. Uh. This is what I may do. Yeah, let's put it on the slow cooker setting. Actually, better yet. Yeah, let's do that. Alrighty y'all, so I'll let you know when we're back to the next next step, next step, which should be done, done delicious goodness. So, we'll be back. So, we are back. Mm-hmm. We are back with the final product. So, anyways, I do have a little correction. I did say I was going to put it on slow cooker, which I did, but it was taking too long. So I ended up bumping up to the meat and stew option and let it uh, cook. And it cooked under pressure for 30 minutes. I released the pressure and just kept it on warm for about a half an hour. And adjusted the seasoning according to what you like. But yes, look at this goodness. OMG. Look at that. Look how good it looks. Like I said, I think it's very perfect. Uh, may need a little bit more salt. And, you know, I think I added enough to it right now and let it cool down. But I think all I need is my garnish and a couple of this and a couple of that. But, oh my God, look at all these. Beautiful piggy pieces. Oh my god. Oh Lord have mercy. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. So yeah, let's go ahead and have a taste. Mmm. You know what? The only thing it needs is that lime juice. 
that garnish of onion and a little jalapeno. And it's perfection. Now, it does still take hours to make if you make it like I do. But this will be the cleanest, most flavorful manudo you ever had in your life. And it's deboned, like I said. We got deboned pig feet. We got our tripe. We got our pig ears. Mm -hmm. We got a big can of hominy. Good hominy. And this is our final product. So just wait till the mukbang. And thank you, thank you for just watching this video. Supporting little old Vern Bang. Thank you, thank you so much. And I'm sure you weren't expecting the recipe video. But I had to give you an updated version. Because this is what I've been doing when I do it. In my Instapop. <laughs> I, uh... Love you, Jaws. Boy.